Hello everyone, welcome back and hope I hope you had a good little break. And um today we gonna work on a polygonal modeling in Maya software. However, as I said that um uh you could use other software that maybe has a similar function. I don't mind um before we build this let's talk about the basics polygonal surface first now before we start to work on this helmet work with maya we need to have a project directory and let me show you what it is gonna I apologize hold on one moment I do find my here we go so um, let me see so 3d fundamental and um, root 10 so this is my uh, project directory when I double click on it you will see quite a few of project folder uh, sorry uh, subfolder in uh, workspace is the uh, preference of whatever you work in the current uh, project and now if I click on scene scene will contain a Maya scene basically and um, now I can talk about only the main uh, important folder subfolder inside Maya directory source images is contain whatever you like to use for a um, texture image plane everything need to be inside this folder source images okay images folder will be the folder that you rendering case okay, so it's different than source images source images is the images that will you will be using for image plane or texture mapping okay so let me put this away okay so now let's get started first this is Maya interface this is a main command main menu command these are correspond to the uh, command module this is different set of modules so you have modeling raking animation and so on so uh, we will be using modeling and rendering uh, the most on on this uh, modules and this is called status line it's contain a shortcut you can create a new scene open scene save scene undo and read uh, redo and now when you look at on this icon when you move your cursor there will be a pops up uh, text explain what it is right now it's showing high selection set and this is show this is high can you see how you will have a vertical line with a little triangle with vertical line and a long rectangle it's mean expanded so this is collapse so if I click is expand collapse expand so in um there's a bunch of stuff in here I will explain only things we need and um, right now these are selection mode right now we are on selection type uh, object type and we have a component type so we will talk about that later soon this is called shelf and shelf contains a few shelf tabs you can customize them and um, actually I have one of mine that I customized it, use it for uh, raking we don't really need it for this semester 
we're going to really concentrate on polygon modeling tab. And you have a basic four windows like this. Okay. And um, top view, perspective, side view, and font view. And can you see there's a correspond, a font view is equal to Z direction. So now when you look at on this tripod, Z, and this is positive Z because is the uh, direction of the Z. You will see the, the, um, the kind of a blue line there. This is a tripod. This is called global uh, axis or world axis. And Y is up, X is side. Now positive X, and if you don't see the lines, indicate a negative values. So forward is positive, backward is negative. Same thing as a top is positive, bottom is negative. And side is considered a left side. Uh, um, it's called right side, not left side. But um, in the real world, though, if you face forward on the positive Z right here, right? Let me maximize this quick. If you positive, oh, sorry, let me go back. Um, if you stand up, and face forward to the positive Z, this positive X will be your left hand side instead. But in Maya, it's considered as a right side. So, a little strange, but that's what it is. And now, on each viewport, you have a, each viewport has its own menu, basically. And this menu is uh, correspond to some of appearance of the uh, uh, no, not some all the up appearance of the viewport. For example, under shading, right now I am on a smooth and shade all. Oh, sorry, let's create the scene together so that you can work with it too. Um, first, we need to go to file menu and look for a project section right here. You have two options on project section. And in project section, you have project window and set project. Project window you will be using when you start a new project. If you are using this previous project, you will choose set project instead. So what? let's take a look at what it is. So project window you will get this. This is a pops-up menu of the project window. And project window is allow you to create a new project. You can rename them here. In the location, you can browse it where you want it to save on. So now to create a new project, right now you can't change any name because this is show the current project, which is this. So what you need to do is click on new. Now you get a new project. And I often leave underscore and project so that I know this is project directory for Maya. I'm gonna uh, name D GM. You don't have to name exactly same as mine. You could just name a um, uh, helmet project or something. So I'm going to call week 10 project. Now for location, I'm going to click browse and I'm going to browse it to my computer. I have uh, my own computer. I have several um, hard drive here. So you just go to wherever you want to save it. So I'm going to put in fun week 10 and click select. Now you click accept. So we will take a look at how the folder look like. 
So I'm going to go to a um, my uh, window explorer. So this is my project directory. And this is the sub folder under the uh, week 10 plot project. So now when we save the file, Maya will put inside here under scene. And then later on when you download the um, uh, image reference right here, you will put that inside source images. Okay, we're going to do that together. So let's come back here. So I'm going to go to File Menu, New Scene, right. not saving. With the new scene, you will get this. The first perspective, if you want to see all full view, you tap space bar. Here we go. Just tap space bar. If you press space bar down, you will get a markup menu. So, and if you need to change different view, you can maximize it by moving, just moving cursor over each view and tap space bar. I'm going to tap space bar again. Here we go. So now look at under polygon modeling tab. These are a primitive and it's a shortcut for uh, polygonal primitive. We're going to use only polygonal, poly modeling. We are not using anything else like curved surface. Do not use this. N these are nerve surface. We will not use this on this uh, for this semester. We're going to use only polygon modeling tab. Now, poly modeling tab or poly polygon model, you could find it in the main command also under create menu and polygon primitive. So there's a bunch of preset that you can use. At this point. Can you see we're going to create a sphere and sphere you have this right there so sphere you can click sphere every time when you create a new object in Maya it will place it inside on the center of the world space right there now how to navigate the viewport though um, let's take a look at a perspective view first if you hold alt key right mouse button hold it keep holding alt you switch to dolly tool i can move up and down or you can move left to right like that here we go to dolly in so the dolly in motion is basically you just move camera closer to the object now on perspective view if you hold alt key again okay now if you switch to l left mouse button you switch to a orbit or tumble so you orbit around the object here we go like that so now if you want it to track or move side to side I keep holding alt key so you're gonna hold the middle mouse button and then move side to side like this there we go so now s similar way on a two uh, orthographic view which is font side and top Hold Alt key with right mouse button, drag, you dolly in and out. Now, there's a difference. If you hold Alt with right mouse button, nothing gonna happen, and you will get the message that all the graphic view are not uh, are currently locked, because so that you can do only two plane. So you can dolly in and out and then track left and right. So that's basic navigation. And to move the object though, <coughs> to
to move the object. You select the object, look at on the tool palette here. You have selection tool. If you move cursor over it, wait for a little bit, you will see it ex has a pop up text. And now it's describe what it is plus show the shortcut Q and has movie. So more and more movie if you see that icon. When you click on it, it will look like this. Sorry, this one doesn't have movie, just explain. So selection to object and component. Uh, use for selection object or component in the scene and edit or edit window. Now, if it is switch, it's toggle to a uh, select object by type and component type so also you can go to the uh, uh, reference detail select object or component select hotkey selection mode let's click on this quick here we go and it will bring up a um, Maya help me um, document so allow you to look at how to use it read a little detail on the function and this is a uh, object mode component mode and soft selection mode we will talk about that and now you can watch the video Maya basic how to select object so I'm gonna click on it okay. I'm gonna expand it in Maya there are many ways in which you can select objects the most basic way is to click the Select Tools icon or press the Q key and then click on the object. You can do this because Object Mode, which you can see in the status line, is on by default. The other modes are Hierarchy Mode and Component Mode. A quick way to toggle between the Object and Component Modes is to press F8. You can set the Selection Style for the Select Tool in its Tool Settings. Just double click its icon to open it. You can use Marquee, which is the default, or Drag Mode. In Drag Mode, you just paint the mouse over anything and it gets selected, which is especially useful for selecting components. With Marquee, anything the box touches is selected. If you want to move the marquee area without redrawing it, press the Alt key and drag it to a new position. You can also use the Lasso tool to drag around objects when a marquee rectangle isn't the best shape to use. Anything that the lasso touches is selected. You can press the Shift key to add objects to the selection, but the Shift key also toggles the selection if you click on objects that are already selected. If you don't want to accidentally deselect objects while you're adding to the selection, press Ctrl plus Shift and click or drag. To remove objects from the selection, press the Ctrl key as you click or drag over them. When you select multiple objects, you may notice that the last one selected is always green, while the others are white. The last selected object is known as the key or lead object. Maya changes the color to let you know the order of selection which it uses for certain operations. For example, when you select objects to create a hierarchy, the green object will be the parent. If you like, you can change this color in the Color Settings window. Click the Active tab and customize the lead object color. To invert the selection of objects, press Ctrl plus Shift plus I or choose Select Inverse. And to isolate selected objects, press Ctrl plus 1 or click the Isolate Selected icon in a view panel or choose Show Isolate Select View Selected. To select all selectable objects in the scene, press Ctrl plus Shift plus A or choose Select All. Press Alt plus D or choose Deselect All to deselect all objects, or simply click or drag in an empty area of the scene. 
To select all objects of only that type, such as NURB surfaces, choose an option from the Select All by Type menu. The Object Modes icons also let you filter the selection by type. You can click the Object Type filters to decide exactly what you can or can't select with the Select tools. By default, all options are on, so if you didn't want to be able to select joints in a character, for example, just click its icon to turn it off. You can also right-click on the icon to get more specific on each filter's selections, such as not being able to select NURB surfaces objects. When you can't select scene elements in a view, you can use the outliner to select their nodes. For example, if an object is hidden, select its node and press H to display it in the view again. In a View Panels Show menu, you can also turn off the selection highlighting completely and then use the outliner to select nodes for the object. All right, so that's really explained in detail on the selection tool. I'm going to move this away for a little bit. Okay, and then let's move on. Now, what about to move object around, rotate around, and scale? So when I turn on, this is a... a lasso selection you already see how it works and we also have paint selection we most likely we don't really use much on these two uh, for this semester at all now move when you turn on move to you will see this tripod here we go can you see that's tripod so now the tripod is indicated by default is on the world space let's take a look at the uh, official video so let's move cursor over the move to and click on more and then now move object you can click play here that's constraint moving so you're moving only one axis at a time if you grab the center you move all three axis on 2d view and um, now let's see what else do we got this is moving component so and um, when I click on it can you see you can grab each component and move to form the object so let's take a look at what do we have more on move to and um, now move to this is a you can see is talk more in depth of the uh, uh, setting on the move to so the setting basically you can access by double click on the move to itself and you will get this setting oops sorry if you dock this by accident just grab the tab and tear it off Okay, so now um, you could let look at that uh, uh, move to here we go. So I want to open that help menu again. So this will give you in depth of what those function are. Most likely we don't really need it. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. Close this. So. Now at this point, move setting is set to the world. You can change to object space, world space, component space. Mainly you for animation though, you probably will be using object space quite a lot. For modeling time to time, you will switch to object space. And uh, I will talk about that when we get to, uh, if we get a chance to use them. And now, can you uh, leave the tool setting on so if you can't find it let me close again double click on move to I want to show you something let's focus on perspective view I'm gonna tap the space bar to maximize it 
and I'm gonna move these window a, a, around a little bit right there I don't want to dock into any so once again if you hold alt key with middle mouse button on perspective view you can track them and with right mouse button you dolly in and out left mouse button you do orbit okay so I'm gonna dolly and move so now right now we are on a word space there's one thing that I need to show you to you soft selection time to time though you will accidental um, accidentally press B by accident I press B is enable a soft selection and what it does though this is what you need to do on polygonal to access to the component you can right click it's a shortcut it's same thing as uh, not same thing but it's similar function as a F8 F8 is just go in right into the component mode but right mouse click you will get this click and hold it's not just only one click click and hold and you have vertex edge and face these are mainly for modeling the re uh, uh, for vertex face if you choose we'll we do that later and this is object mode UV edited you probably won't use it on this semester and if you click and drag make sure you hold and drag and when you get to sub menu if you want it to go up you just move it back like this move the cursor right but if I choose vertex there's no pops up sub menu at all so only UV has a sub menu this is called marking menu here we go I'm gonna go back come on ah. here we go go back to this point sorry right here once again come back and move it over that point now choose vertex and can you see when you move your cursor if you want it to move only one let's let's see this um, if I select only one point that's the vertex now everything turned yellow when I move it up can you see it look like this it stretch the whole surface so that because of soft selection is on I'm gonna undo control C or this button undo when I turn it off it doesn't have a fall off volumes to translate or deform the object so now I really move only one component it's like that so once again the soft selection shortcut is B on your keyboard so if I press B again here we go and I'm gonna undo can you undo all however soft selection it can be very useful for sculpting or molding the surface like for example let's turn it on you can press B here we go and now there's a fall off volumes right now it used the whole volumes and now the volumes uh, when you use the whole volumes is a uh, it based on the bounding box of the object it discard the uh, the flow of the wireframe but surface it will be based on the surface volumes surface uh, topology it will fall with the topology so now you have a fall off radius and this is a fall off curve you don't need to to worry about this right now you can change the fall off, uh, fall off preset also but this is what we need to the most if I decrease it here we go can you see it's reduced the fall off so it's mean it will affect only within those a uh, area of colors so a pure dark color of red will be no effect and then gradually toward to the yellow color will be the most affected uh, area here we go and what we moving is uh, Maya tried to mimic 
the、uh, surface tangents to make it look like curve based on the edges. We will talk. I will explain about this more. So now I'm gonna switch. Can you right click and choose edge? You can pick one edge. Let me pick this edge. Here we go. And oop, you can move like this. So this is molding. Now, when you work with Maya, though, we really、um, we do not as intensive as ZBrush that you sculpting using brush stroke and moving things in fall off technique. So we will moving things, but not. Such a way as ZBrush. Just have to remember that. So that's the soft selection. And now, if you hold B key with middle mouse button while soft selection is on, you can change the fall off volumes on the fly, like this. I just hold B key with middle mouse button. Look like this. Here we go. And I can move up and down. That's enough. Let's turn off soft selection. Here we go. I'm gonna close that. Now to get off component mode, you right click and choose object mode, and that one it is. So I can move. Can you see tumble? You see. And when you work on perspective view. I would prefer you to move one axis at a time. Just grab those axes like that. You don't want it to move in three plane because this is hard to track. Can you see? Because now I move it below the ground plane, so it's really hard. And if you move like one axis at a time, it's easier to control it. And、um, can you see these、uh, plane reference? So blue plane is mean this direction, y and x. X plane is y and z. And y plane is x and z. So this is mean if I grab a y, but、uh, what is it? Yeah, y plane. I will move in two dimension, so x dimension and z dimension. Pos negative, positive, positive z, negative z. Okay. So same thing as if I grab a, a blue plane, will be a y and x. If you click and hold, can you see? It gives you a little bit of reference color. To see that's the plane direction. Okay. Now what about rotate? Rotate. You have four rings. Now each color is correspond to x, y, and z. So x is red, y is green, blue is z. Same thing as a move to. Y is green, X is red, Z is blue. Just remember that. Same as scale, okay? And scale and move to has plane that allow you to scale into plane or single plane, non-uniform or uniform by grabbing the center cube. So let's go back to rotation one more time. Now, can you activate one of the、uh, blue or red color or green? Now, the、um, crayon color those are rotate all three dimension, dimensional, and、um, perpendicular to the camera. So it's mean based on the camera angle, you can rotate three dimensional in that direction. And can you look at on the channel box there? The volumes has changed there.、N、right now, the scale is below than one hundred percent. It's only nine, uh, ninety-one percent, point nine one basically. And this is scale rotate. 
now on the scale you can change it back from here to original values Oop. I'm gonna click and drag like this and you can press 1 and that's the 100% uh, scale now on scale if you press 0 though it's gone it, because of 0 scale so it's still there now if you deselect it by clicking somewhere else you can't see it it's still there though now to find it you have to use outliner right here outliner and P sphere 1 click on it and now I'm gonna click and drag on the field right here click and drag with left mouse button I can press 1 it will come back okay same as here if I select all and press 0 it will go back to the original space there we go and this is how it looks so let's delete this okay now let's create a plane right here polygon plane let's talk about the anatomy of polygon so now after you switch to selection tool I'm gonna turn off outliner by clicking toggle this off okay and let's change the um, primitive setting so it's called primitive because under a Chanel box right here this is Chanel box there's an input polyplane one when you highlight it when you click and highlight it you will see a setting subdivision with right now set to 10 so 10 on vertical and 10 on horizontal so width and height so now can you change to only 2 and 2 there we go we just need only those 2 and 2 and the width and height you can change the volumes if I type 2 it will look like this right so I'm gonna change it back to 1 okay you don't have to do scale it with primitive you can change the width and height here so now before we talk about other object let's talk about the um, anatomy of the polygon first so now here we go if you right click and choose face this is called faces polygonal face and you have a full faces in here and each face are connected by vertex so vertex will be right here right click and choose vertex quick so these are vertex here we go and now what about edge edge it has to have two vertex two vertices in order to create one edge but edge cannot stand alone it has to have at least three to four edge in order to produce one single polygonal face so in each component you can move them by selecting component you can select multiple component by using a marquee select like this um, if you want to know uh, if you want to get in depth of how to use selection tool again you go to uh, move your cursor over selection tool icon here and then click on more and then you can click on selection tool here we go so that it gives you more detail there see that here we go and selection mode to see selection mode select object or component click on it again and then you can watch that video again so I'm gonna close all of that so. and also if you tumble it to the bottom this is called back face of polygonal surface you have back and front face just remember now we always want a front face to be outside and the back face to be the inside okay because this will affect rendering 
So um, OpenGL will render front face, not the back face. This is OpenGL. Okay, some application we can actually show double side too, but we don't need to uh, go to that route. So now this is what I want you to look. Um, go to object mode. Now can you move this aside a little bit? Create a sphere one more time. There we go. And deselect it. Can you see right now the spherical object has surface look really soft and smooth that because of the surface normal point into the same direction let's take a look at this um, can you select both of the object go to display and then object um, under polygonal turn on a face normal right there so this line indicate a direction of the face normal okay so now can you see the back side the normal will not show on the back side will show only on the front side and this is how you indicate it where's the front where's the back okay you always want to consistent the front surface when you do modeling it to be outward like this okay now and deselect it right now it looks smooth right I want you to do this reselect the uh, sphere go to mesh display and then choose harden edges harden edge here we go and harden edge can you deselect it will look like this so Harden edge basically it changes the normal direction of the vertex or vertices. You have face normal and you have vertices normal or vertex normal. So let's select the sphere again. Go to display polygons and choose uh, vertex normal. So now can you see you have a face normal right there and vertex normal let's turn off a face normal so that less thing to look at it right now our objects are not smooth anymore looks facet because we're telling Maya that to split the normal vertex so that each vertex will affect the line, the edges, to appear to be separated, to be like hard. So now let's go back, mesh, display, and choose soften edges. When you do that, can you see all the four vertices, uh, four normals on each vertex? Because it has four directions, so each normal has a different uh, no each vertex has different normal point into different direction so if you have three corner you're gonna get a three line you have five corner you get a five lines by default you want it to be on four lines only so it will look like this that's thing that you need to know how to create a mimic a, a smooth surface without increase the height topology okay so next this is what we will do <coughs> we will create a different type of polygon and uh, we're gonna play around a little bit okay so I'm gonna move these away Grab that and move it away. So now let's create a box. So this is the box. Now, if you look at under a uh, channel box, under input, highlight poly cube one. You can change the width, height, and depth. Either typing or you can create a slide technique. 
if you highlight the label of the attribute editor there, uh, uh, channel box, attribute, yep. Yeah. Click and hold on your middle mouse button. <clears throat> and then you can slide left and right on screen. It has to be on screen. There we go. So you can get started something like this. Now I'm going to change the height. The height at this moment correspond to y and if you look at it it's by order you have x y and z so z is depth y is height here we go so i can make it a little thinner i can make the depth a little wider so and let's move that away move somewhere there we go. and one more thing subdivision with height and depth you need it when you want it to molding them more polygon more uh, polygon surface to to sculpt or to push and pull so you increase this if you create a floor or a pole you might just need only a few of them like for example if i can create a thick panel like this I don't need any subdivision so but let's try another one create a cube again do similar things so we're gonna change width and depth make it a little thicker and less thick okay now subdivision width if I add I just use middle mouse click middle mouse drag you can type it in but I really like this technique so height seems like height is unnecessary so i can put it to one subdivision depth i can do one like this two like this and why do we need this we need this because if we wanted to create more detail if i grab the uh, edge right click and i can move it up like that you see and um, this is called non-planar surfaces. Um, in OpenGL, this will not render co uh, uh, correctly. Like in game engine, you need to subdivide into triangle. So, but in this case, it's okay. Okay. And how about I grab only face? There we go. So I can deform them. Format. And if you notice, is I always moving into a uh, one direction at a time by grabbing activate only uh, one asset of tripod to constrain them. Now, what about this? I'm gonna switch to edge, select edge. Now, if I wanted to do two side at one, I can shift. Let's change shading to wireframe for quick. See, I select like that. Now, if I move it, go like this, right? What if I change to scale 2 and then I scale multiple components together? It act like a moving but in opposite direction. So we can form the shape like this. Okay. If you missed this step, just go back to the video and start it over. I like you to form that shape. I'm going to switch back to smooth and shade all right click and choose object mode there we go. so we're going to play around with the uh, forming the shape for now i'm going to move this away now it's time to pause the video to play around because i'm going to move on and, um, now let's try box again how about i do little things like this now this time I am not going to move let me increase the size a little bit move component like that um, this we sculpt the existing component we can actually add or extend the surface it's like additive so to extend the surface um, 
if you right click and choose face there you go now when I pick the face I can extend it right what if I wanted to create an extension and then make it smaller and then extrude it so now if you on a face mode hold shift key and when you move your cursor can you see when while on you move to you see the extrusion you can grab that just keep keep holding uh, shift key and then I drag up here we go and I can scale it switch to scale 2 I gonna scale only Y plane right here so I'm gonna scale X and Z together at the same time I'm gonna grab this I don't want it to do like this because it's so hard to get uniform so I'm gonna undo I grab this and then scale it down like that there we go so it's a shortcut when you hold shift key with any manipulator to select rotate but be careful if I do this I act extrude it and right in the same spot so what you get you will get a almost non manifold this is incorrect to fix it you get to move it up there we go. so be careful try not to use scale to with shift key now what if we want to select a component multiple component to select multiple component or multiple object you will add shift key but be careful can you see when you move over the tripod we'll switch to extrude because in this case you may accidental move it by accident and you get an extrude and this is called non manifold because you have to extend it like this now there will be the time that you forget and you're gonna get something really strange on your geometry and basically unusable so be careful about the shift and move rotate and scale so now this is what I would suggest if you wanted to add surface you better to use a selection tool when you hold shift see the thing is selection tool it's allow you to select only there's no manipulator handle so it's mean you will not accidental extrude the surface the only thing you do is you toggle between deselect on the selected surface or at selection so can you see minus positive so I can add to subtract just keep holding shift key click again to toggle off toggle deselect basically so shift select now what if I want to select multiple surfaces polygon faces on there I want to modify them how about just top um, if I hold shift and region drag like this can you see it's deselect because shift key is also it's a toggle select and deselect now I'm gonna undo what if I want to maintain the selection I have to add control shift together and then drag now it will maintain the selection the selected surface and add more control shift let me undo again control shift together you add and include the uh, previous selection undo if you hold shift again will add the surface within that rectangle and subtract the selected sur the already selected surface there we go so just remember that part so go to object mode and move this away okay and you will post this image on the d2l i will add so that uh, i know that you watch this video and follow it the next thing let's create another sphere 
this time I like you to reduce the size so 2020 let's just type 1010 yeah. so now we are gonna work more on a component selection right click and choose face okay so I like you to select play around to select a whole row of loop let me switch to selection to one click hold shift double click next phase it will select the whole loop like that once again I'm gonna keep holding shift click and then shift double click I get that once again hold shift add and shift double click next to it if you don't double click on the next surface to the pivot selection it will do like this instead it will select in between like that so I'm gonna undo 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 you have to undo until there's no selection in order to override it shift select shift double click okay. and now we're gonna play we're gonna extrude the surface to extrude it there's another main another sub command if you hold shift key right mouse click right mouse click now you will get a multiple section here and there's an extrude phase there choose it now this is different than when you do hold shift key with selection tool so you will get an option on the fly and extrude manipulator right there see that so now if i normally you would always want to extrude along the axis is perpendicular to the uh, normal face normal basically here we go so it's look like this and what if i wanted to make the edge a little thinner i can grab only the green color of the um, a um, Y axis but it doesn't look great at all it's just based on the normal that's what you got I'm gonna undo I don't like that um, we can switch these reference right now it's normal reference we can switch it oh hold on sorry so you can try let's play with the scale z axis x axis this way what about both x and y so both x and y i want to grab i want uniform so i'm going to grab a blue plane instead because blue plane is can you see when i click and hold it will scale only x and y here we go and actually this is better let's try that here we go now what about the clay on cube though clay on cube is actually a scale uniformly on all assets here we go so let's undo go back let's do all assets it will look like this here we go okay now can you click somewhere to deselect now what if you accidental uh, accidentally deselect the component mode if you click it again it's not coming back can you see that manipulator so now even though we are right here this is what you need to do you need to highlight under channel box if you go to object mode first highlight the poly extrude phase and then turn on manipulator if you don't see manipulator here press T now you will get that back okay so once again to extrude surface you can do a few things you can select the component turn on move to and hold shift and extrude okay or hold shift right mouse click and choose extrude when you hold uh, shift with right mouse button to choose the command you will get the uh, tripod okay now just remember for this class do not extrude edge or vertex 
do not extrude edge and a uh, edge and vertex. So if I extrude edge, let me try. You create non-manifold. These cannot be used in any OpenGL or animation. Or not even good for model. So make sure don't do that. Undo. Let's let me try. Let's try extrude vertex. See what it is. Look like this. So extrude vertex. Now you get a incomplete line. So this is not correct way. So don't do it. Okay. Extrude only face only. Okay. So I think for today, I thought that we gonna build the helmet. Let's hold it off because it's quite been a lot of information already. Now, what I want you to do though, I want you to play play around with moving vertices and extrude and try different a uh, uh, primitive. Try a different primitive. Adjust the um, uh, primitive setting, and then just put multiple object on the scene like this you're gonna do a screen capture and um now if we use pc on a uh, window um you could use a clipping tool or print screen okay so and um can you click under shading turn on a uh, wireframe on shade alt 5 and do screen cap and post it on the D2L. I'm gonna create a uh, in class exercise uh, one, week one, a uh, week ten in class exercise one. Okay, so that's it for today. All right. Oh, guys, um, if you every single window 10 has snipping tool you can just search that tool and the way it works to do screen cap i click new and then i just marquee select and i got that i'm gonna save this make sure you save as a jpeg and um let's see gonna put it inside a uh, our section complete helmet and uh, image I'm gonna call a um, exercise one zero one okay and then I'm gonna save in there JPEG file okay and you're gonna use that image to post on D2L. Okay. You know, maybe I'll go to D2L right now. One moment. Uh, one moment. I'm gonna create a new discussion group. Okay. And let's call a. Uh, in class exercise one so ten slash one okay in class exercise ten slash one and then I can add Where did I save it? Hold on. <laughs> oh, I save in the wrong folder. I save in the movie folder instead. I don't know why. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Where did I save? What? Oh, wow. I 
hundred years. Uh oh, I went to the wrong folder. Sorry, my bad. Right there. Okay. And okay. All right. Please submit your screen capture on this pose. Yeah. And this will be by Thursday. What day is it? Thursday. By Thursday. Twenty seventh. There you go. Save. All right, guys. That's it for today. So it's under table content assignment. And scroll down to that. Okay. So I will put another video on Thursday again. I'll see you then. Bye.